Hello everyone, this is Matthew from Student Affairs and Industrial Engagement and welcome to an episode of Keep It Lead. For Keep It Lead series, we had the privilege to speak to two different speakers, a yoga instructor and a head coach of a gym. And today, we are honoured to be able to hear from Arthur, an individual who holds many hats. He's a motion graphics artist, designer, editor, videographer and photographer. He was once a student as well, having graduated from Communications Design in 2018 with first class honours. Speaking about students, our students in PSB Academy will inevitably face problems that crop up in their school life, whether it's with regards to a group project that they are doing or an individual assignment. For those that are in the student clubs as committee members, they might face problems when it comes to the planning of events. So Arthur, as someone who had to solve multiple problems in both your student life as well as your working life, can you share with us the five steps to out-of-the-box thinking to solving problems? Thanks Matthew for the kind introduction and it's definitely a privilege uh, for me to share today my knowledge and hopefully you guys can find this helpful in some ways. Yeah. So five steps to out-of-the-box thinking to solving problems. So step one um, for me is to stop. Mm. Stop whatever that I'm trying to do. So stop whatever you are doing, trying to tackle a certain problem. Because sometimes when we are stressed up, it's very easy to be tunnel vision. Um, mm. So stop. Just clear away everything else unrelated to this problem, to this project, this issue you are facing. Clear away your plate um, and, and just stop. Mm. So second step is diagnosing the problem. So what is the issue? What is the problem here? So asking the what question. Mm. Analyze the issue, identify what is the problem you are getting stuck with. So the third step in this is the big one. The, thir the third step is the big one. Asking the why. Why is the issue, why is the problem really here? Mm. Now why is the big one? Because the key to finding answers is through asking the whys. Um, the, the, the whys questions are the ones that will find you the real issue behind the problem. You see, there are no stupid whys. Mm. Uh, even if they sound basic. So questions like, you know, why do train stations need next arriving train timing? Mm. Uh, why is Grab working so well as compared to conventional taxi services? Uh, why do striped toothpaste sell better than regular toothpaste? These may sound like questions that, you know, who, who even asks these questions? But when you do ask these questions and then you find out the answer, you realize that uh, many a times these solutions are actually because they are out of the box. That's why they work. So ask the basic whys. Ask, always ask the whys because they are the important questions. So next step, uh, step four is asking, is the issue, is the problem really in the what or in the why? Now you need to identify is the issue in the what question or in the why question. And lastly, step five, always ask what else. Mm. Is there anything else? There is always something else. Before you get to a solution, always ask what else before you go, before you leave that um, certain problem behind. It might prove to be useful um, in terms of finding out what the problem is and what the solution may be. Mm. Now asking what else helps to broaden your mind and allow your mind to stay open to other ideas to tackle and not stay hell-bent on one single idea. Mm. So asking what else can help you to find multiple ways to tackle a brief, to tackle a project rather than staying occupied on that one way. So more often than not, asking the what else will be the one uh, that leads you to out-of-the-box ideas or solution to your problems. Mm. So one, one of the examples that's always on my heart that I love to share um, is by one of the great advertising minds um, in our generation. Called, he's called Rory Sutherland. Um, mm. Essentially, he was presented with the problem of um, Eurostar. Eurostar is a train system that gets you from um, Paris to London or London to Paris. So the, the, the standard um, traveling time between these two cities are three hours from London to Paris, three hours. So um, basically, they were getting complaints that three hours is too long. Passengers were complaining that travel, traveling time is too long. We want to shorten it down. You know, so 
what happened? Eurostar management, you know, get to work. They they ask um, business people, they ask engineers. Okay, you know what? How can we speed the trains up? Because people want the travel time to be shorter. So they are thinking and and finding ways to 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 streamline the design of the train to speed things up. And they realize that the the estimated cost, you know, to implement all the changes across the trains will be a few billion pounds altogether mm-hmm. to speed the train up by forty minutes. So instead of three hours, you will get a traveling time of two hours and twenty minutes from Paris to London or London to Paris. Now Rory Sutherland comes in and he gives an absolutely wild idea, but very very out of the box. He says, "Guys, for a fraction of that money, why not install Wi-Fi on all the trains? Has that been done?" Because he realizes that that hasn't been done, he also realized that the the why behind people were complaining is not because they actually wanted the trains to speed up. It's more like people were finding it very unproductive to be on the trains. They realized that being on the train for three hours doing nothing is actually very unproductive for kids and for adults alike, especially for working adults. Imagine having Wi-Fi on the train. You can entertain the kids. Make them watch a movie, stream a movie, or stream YouTube. And for working adults, you can reply email. You can do stuff online that you that. So so basically, what what he was trying to say is, you can spend the three hours on the train productively, and you only need basically just need to install Wi-Fi on all the trains, right? So that's that's actually a solution that people normally don't don't consider. Now he argues that with ten percent of that of the budget of a few billion pound budget, you know, higher like. Models or even famous actors and actresses to be on the to be on the train to give out drinks and desserts, and he argues that passengers might even want the train ride to be longer rather than shorter, right? So you see, these these are this is just an example, um, one example of out of the box thinking uh, to sol- to to solving a issue or problem. So that's all I wanted to share. So thanks for the time, man. I see. Thank you, Arthur, for taking time out of your busy schedule to share with us these five steps, as well as the example on Rory Sutherland. They are definitely very helpful. And just like this video, all our videos in the Keep It series are helpful as well. So if you have not watched any of them, please do so today. See you next time. Goodbye. In summary, these are the five steps to out of the box thinking. Step one is to stop. Stop whatever that you're doing so that you'll not be tunnel vision. Step two is to ask yourself what is the issue or problem. Step three is to ask yourself why there is this issue or problem. Step four is to identify whether the issue or problem is in the what or the why. And lastly, step five is to ask what else.